Hey friends, welcome back to math class. So for 11-3, here is our question to guide our learning. How can I solve multi-step word problems involving all four operations? So just like always, let's break it down. Multi-step, what is that giving us a clue about? That's right, we're gonna be doing more than one problem. More than one. Because we know that as we solve this, we're going to need to do more with the information than just one step. If we're only doing one step, we're going to be getting it wrong because we've forgotten a hidden question inside the problem. All right, so how can I solve word problems with more than one step involving all four operations? Okay, so what are our four operations? We've got addition subtraction, multiplication, and division. So this is just giving us a warning that all of the problems that we're doing today, we're going to figure out how we have to solve them. It's not just gonna be multiplication right off the bat, addition, subtraction right off the bat. So we're gonna have to be using our thinking brains to help us figure out how we're going to solve these problems. Now, just very quickly, before we go ahead and look at a problem, let's remind ourselves our steps to solve it. So when we are solving a multi-step word problem, the very first thing we need to do is read and picture what is happening in the problem in our minds. This helps us understand what's going on in the problem. Next, we need to write an answer statement. The answer statement is what helps us make sure that what we're solving actually gives us the answer that we need. Then we're going to create our number sentences from our problem, and then we just chunk it down and we solve it. All right, let's go ahead and look at our first problem. Ava bought four yards of rope to make a swing. Rylan spent $18 on rope. How much did they spend in all? All right, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna visualize this problem. I'm gonna think about what are we even talking about? In this case, we're talking about Ava and Rylan making a swing and how much money they spent. So I'm gonna be thinking about that, picturing that in my head as I solve it. Now, step two, I'm gonna come up with my answer statement. Okay, so what would an answer to this problem look like? The question is how much did they spend in all? So I guess it would be they spent blank in all. So I know I'm looking for a total amount because in all means total. So I'm gonna be figuring out how much they spent together. All right, now let's go back up here to Ava though because to figure out how much they spent in all, I need to figure out how much Ava spent. So here it tells me Ava bought four yards of rope. So now I wonder, okay, well, how much is each bundle of rope, each yard of rope, they didn't tell me in the question, but da, 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 da. over here we've got a diagram that gives us a little bit of information that will help us. This says that rope costs $3 per yard. So now I can write a number sentence, step three, to help me solve it. So for my number sentence here to figure out how much Ava spent, I've got $3 per yard. So that would be, she's got four yards and they are $3 each. So four times three equals A. That's just a little variable that stands for the number we don't know yet, which is the amount that Ava made. So four times three equals, well, if I skip count by four, four, eight, 12. I know that Ava spent $12. So now here, for my next step, because remember, the problem didn't say how much did Ava spend? No, 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 no. It said how much did they both spend? So looking for my total amount spent by Ava and Rylan, and that's what my tiny t stands for. Got my tiny t here. 18 plus blank equals t. Now I wonder where did they get that 18? If I go back to my problem, I see that Rylan spent $18. So that was Ryland's total. So now I'm gonna add up Ryland's total plus Ava's total, which we got up here, to equal my total in all. 
Now, I have my second number sentence for me to solve. So I've got 18 plus 12. 8 plus 2, 8, 9, 10. I carry my 1, and then 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. So I know their total was $30. So they spent $30 in all. Let's move on to our second example. All right, here we go. Bianca has 12 stamps. Ruby has 21 stamps. Ruby divides hers into three equal groups and then gives one group to Bianca. How many stamps does Bianca have now? All right, so step one, I'm going to read and visualize my problem. I'm gonna think, what are we talking about here? Well, in this problem, I'm talking about stamps and collecting stamps. I see that Bianca has 12 stamps. Ruby has 21. So as I'm picturing this, I'm gonna be picturing Ruby and Bianca, both with stamps, and Ruby is gonna be putting hers into groups. So that's the picture that I'm gonna be making in my head. So next, step two is write an answer statement. So what would an answer for this problem look like? Well, the question is, how many stamps does Bianca have now? So my answer would be, Bianca has blank stamps. But I know I can't just take this 12 up here from the top because then I didn't actually do a math problem. So I'm gonna have to figure out what happens in this problem that gets Bianca either more or less stamps. So as I continue, this says Ruby divides hers, remember her 21 stamps, into three equal groups. Now it says equal, but it also tells us that Ruby divides hers. So I know that I'm gonna have to take Ruby's 21 stamps and divide it into three groups. So to turn that into a number sentence, that would be 21 divided by three equals blank. Then I see that she's gonna give one of those groups to Bianca. So if I am giving someone something, am I giving them more or will they have less? More. So what operation would help me figure out giving something to someone one time? Addition. So I know that my total here, however much is in one group, plus Bianca's original stamps, because remember we're giving the stamps to Bianca, will give me my total, which I can stick right down here. So step one of my problem is 21 divided by three. Now, whatever strategy you would use to divide is fine. Um, we could use equal groups, we could use a bar model, we could use repeated subtraction. Whatever you would use is fine. I prefer skip counting. So I'm gonna count by threes until I get to 21. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. So I had seven groups of three, so I know 21 divided by three equals seven. And that's seven stamps. So these were the three groups. These are Ruby's stamps. But now my second step, remember, she gave one group to Bianca. So I'm taking one of those groups of seven stamps, and I am going to give those to Bianca's 12. So now I have 12 plus seven. Y'all know me, my favorite strategy is counting up. So I'm gonna go ahead and count up seven more, starting at 12. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So the total is 19 stamps. So now Bianca has 19 stamps.